It's always fun to uh, get in a Nike SB box, wood grain paper, and a fresh pair of new shoes. Yo, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got a detailed look and breakdown on these bad boys right here. This is on the box label at least, the Nike Air Max Ashad. But many people are just calling them the Ashad 2. So he had the Ashad 1s, which we reviewed previously, and now there's the 2. There's lots of things in here that I think are slight upgrades compared to the originals. And then there are some things that I believe are downgrades. But before we go over all of that stuff, uh, the overall shoe is a little bit kind of like weird as far as online item descriptions go. There's lots of conflicting write-ups and item descriptions, and it's a little bit frustrating as somebody that's like trying to relay information or review a product. So the shoe itself is, is very interesting because uh, you can tell that, you know, they took what they've done with the one and moved it over and carried over some things, but then they've also tried to upgrade and switch around some items. However, when you look at the item description, uh, one thing that's not listed is the cushioning system outside of the Air Max unit, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then the most frustrating part about the shoe is just the overall inspiration to the design, where they keep saying that it was based off of a basketball shoe and 90s basketball products and all of that stuff. And every time I look at these, like I do not see basketball at all like i see maybe air max like the running line but even that's a stretch it's mostly because it's an air max model and not necessarily like an air max running style shoe so what i decided to do is hit up somebody that was a part of the design team just to kind of go over and confirm some things that I had suspicions about. So uh, again, the original shoe right here, I believe this one was inspired by 90s basketball. So uh, not only do you see that in the overall design, but you also saw that in a lot of the colorways that were offered as well. Whereas the two, I believe was supposed to be more of an on board, off board type of thing. So they wanted it to look more lifestyle-esque, which I just find strange when it comes to skating because skating is the lifestyle. It's not like a, any other sport where, you know, when you go golfing, you have to wear a collar shirt most people wear hats you know to block their face from the sun you got to wear cleated shoes and stuff like that or, or move that over to football or to soccer slash football those all have very specific uniform requirements skating though like what you wear to skate is what you wear when you're not skating literally like skate is the lifestyle it's weird to me to to read that those are two separate things with product like this like back in the 90s when we skated all the time i didn't wear something different to skate in that i wore to school like that's what i wore now after speaking with somebody over at the design team it turns out that the shoe itself or the overall design package wasn't actually inspired by 90s basketball but it was inspired by a different 90s court shoe which is a tennis model worn by Andre Agassi and it was the Nike Air Flare so when you see this colorway it's actually sampled off of the original white and red colorway of the Air Flare and then when you see the other launch colorway which is kind of like a white blue and teal there's an Air Flare colorway that's an identical match I don't know how things got lost in translation from design team and development all the way to to marketing but something definitely got their wires crossed because they're like regurgitating information from the first model but not relaying what is new from the second one now, as far as the two models are concerned, I like the first one better. Uh, I still like this one's profile view quite a bit, especially with certain colorways, this one being one of them. But there's something about this one that I just really kind of like gravitate towards. And I've also broken these in quite a bit. So these fit my foot way nicer than these. However, we will start off with the bottom of the shoe. So the outsole is very similar to the original. And by very similar, I mean damn near identical. They only really changed the rubber pattern at the base or at the heel. And that's just to accommodate the new cushioning system that they decided to use. Out Outside of that though, it's really the same exact thing. They did add one little swoopy thing there. Ooh. Like it muy macho. Now the midsole or the cup sole on the shoe is something that I do believe is an upgrade from the original. So you still have uh, the, the overall like rubber cup sole package and it feels just as good as the original. If anything, maybe it feels a little bit softer. So for those of you guys that like to get real technical on your boards and really feel and maneuver with everything, this is gonna be one of those real technical style skate shoes. Whereas the original model needed, like I said, like a lot of break in time. Like the, the overall fit are completely different from the two and stuff too. So some people may consider that an upgrade Grade. Some people may consider it a downgrade. It just kind of depends on the type of skater that you are and what your needs are for your skating purposes. One of the other things that I feel that they upgraded though is the foxing strip, which is the extra layer above the actual like solid rubber. You can kind of see that on the original with that brown stripe. This one's just more of like a fuse based. So it's still plastic, but uh, it's, it's very thin. It's mainly for maneuverability and to help adhere the upper to the midsole or the cupsole. Whereas this one here, it's all rubber. So it just is a little bit more durable. It'll 
grip the board a little bit better on flick tricks. So like I said, if you're a technical skater and you like to do lots of flicking, then this shoe should grip the board just a little bit better. Now the upper itself is, I think, a mixture between an upgrade and a downgrade, depending on the panel that we're looking at. So the main rand that you see on this particular colorway that's done up in kind of like a bone color is all suede. I really like it. I think it's great. They even rolled the edges on the toe area. And so that's just going to give it a greater durability. I wish that I would have seen like a triple stitching still, but uh, they didn't do that. It's still double stitch, but again, they rolled it. So at least this will do one of two things. It will be a little bit more durable, not by a bunch because, you know, suede against grip tape, suede doesn't win, but it'll be a little bit more durable in the sense of just an open cut. And on top of that, it's just going to grip the board just a little bit better because it's a thicker area to do so. Now the red area is also suede. It looks great. It feels great. I think that it's awesome. The main cheap part of the material is actually the white leather that you see as like the main like midfoot body. Luckily there's not a ton of it so it's not anything serious but it's just nowhere near as nice as like say these like the majority of these colorways were really nice suede or really nice leather and uh, it just felt like a premium package when it comes to like skate shoes or even just modern performance products. But the leather here is actual leather but it's particle board leather so it's like a bunch of scraps glued together and then heavily coated with a thick polyurethane coat so it's not super flexible or anything like that. Maybe we'll see that change with certain colorways like we normally do. So hopefully we see like an all suede version. I think that, that would be really nice. Now, much like the one, they added a ton of ventilation on the shoe. It's all along the midfoot area. So you got those two side panels full of mesh. That's something that the one did really well. I just love the way that this looks with the extra rubber overlays on top of it and stuff like that. They even carry that over the tongue. That's one of the things I definitely think is a downside to these guys right here where the tongue, while it's the same overall tongue, they covered it with this vinyl-y material from about here down and when that touches the lace loops that are made out of the same material you get that rain boot sound yeah then before we go too far ahead of things, I forgot to talk about the drop in midsole. So we're gonna revert back just a second. And this is it. So basically it's a very similar as far as like overall shape and build. So the stack height is almost the same. The overall like shape and everything's almost the same. The liner that's on top, damn near the same as well. The main difference is I believe the materials, I was told that they think that this was React, but they weren't sure. They're no longer on the team. They like left right before. So getting specifics was still just as difficult as reading the item description on any damn website but i don't believe that it's react because usually react looks like this where they're trying to depict visually what the material is or what the technology is nike's really good at that it's why you have things like this little like translucent section on the outsole it's to really depict that there is air inside as if the windows weren't enough but that's what they do so i believe that the midsole cushioning is not the same as the original but i could be wrong so don't take my word for it it's just what i feel like in hand on foot it doesn't quite feel the same one of the areas that they definitely upgraded though is heel cushion so you can see it right here it's an actual air max unit this thing i just like seeing tech like i think that this is so cool uh, it's something that's always drawn me to nike products so when you do talk about like air units and air windows this is a marketing tactic or a marketing gimmick if you will to make kids like myself at least back in the 90s see this and be like whoa that's way cooler than anything else on the shelf and all these years later it still works on me as far as the overall feel between the two they do feel very similar so that's where like i wouldn't reject the fact that this could be react it just doesn't look like it, you know what I mean? So uh, they're not definitively telling you, hey, this is React. Whereas if it were, Nike usually would. Now going back to the upper, uh, the lace loops are much better than the original, I think, where the original is majority exposed lacing. And uh, there was some, like when I did the first review, uh, some people were like, hey, you missed that underneath here, there's a couple of flywire lace loops where you could do in your flick zone at the forefoot, you're lacing internally. So I did miss that. Thank you for letting me know. However, these ones are kind of, I wouldn't want to say traditional, lace loops but they're definitely covered lace loops so they're protecting the laces themselves they still don't come with extra laces which i still think is a missed opportunity because if you guys buy nike sb often especially the nike sb dunks that's kind of a thing so not only is the lacing system i feel an upgrade compared to the original but the overall lockdown system is definitely an upgrade they extended that like tenfold so on the original you can't really see it but that little stitch line that's there in red is actually depicting inside the shoe that there is a additional lace loop that is affixed to a lockdown strap or tab but it's very isolated to just this zone whereas each of these lace loops 
are part of that whole system. And so it's a, a wider system. It takes care of the entire midfoot area of your foot. So it's complete lockdown, almost like fingers. And when you lace it up, it just sucks you onto the footbed, making the shoe a one-to-one -one fit. And that's where my main complaint is between the two shoes is that these guys right here fit ridiculously tight at first. It took me forever to break these in, but now that they are broken in, they feel amazing. Like I love the way that these fit. The last changed between the two shoes though. So what I was told is they needed to change the last to accommodate the Air Max unit. And so these ones fit just a little bit more loose. So using those like fingered, like lockdown systems that they put in this shoe is definitely necessary because like I said, it's kind of like a weird, like loose fit right from the jump. Even when I tied them all the way up, I was kind of like, I wouldn't want to skate in this. Like this feels like a lifestyle shoe. But outside of that, there's just kind of like cool little features. Uh, one of my favorite is actually along the ice day. It says a shot wear on there, but it just kind of looks like an Air Max. So yeah, some people actually have nicknamed these the Wear Max, which I think is a cool like little like nickname and stuff like that. Now, as far as the overall fit is concerned, I would go true to size for most wide footers you should be good going true to size as well like i said the, the last did change despite them looking really slim and everything they are not a slim fitting shoe uh, they do feel a little bit loose so just keep that in mind if you're a super narrow footer i would definitely recommend going in store and trying them on so far it seems like they've only been released at like skate shops as well as like the dot com like nike.com ccs.com stuff like that can i interrupt your ending for a second sure so if we're going to do questions of the day i have a new one that is kind of a compound off of our last question of the day from the Jordan 4s. We talked about favorite sandwiches or what your state or country or wherever you live, like what sandwich is the go-to sandwich? I don't know if it was uh, somebody in Chicago or New York, but they said pizza, like as an open face sandwich. Does that count though? That's, that's what they had thrown out there and it had made me laugh. And so I wanted to know what is your ultimate pizza? Like toppings? Toppings or- Crust style? Do you like crust? <laughs> Do you like the Bigfoot with the centered square? That was my favorite as a kid. It's disgusting now. So what would your pizza be now? I mean, it would depend on my era, obviously. So but I'm saying now. I know, but I gotta, I gotta include everything that I've done in my past. Young Chris definitely loved no crust in the middle zone pizza. Absolutely loved it. Like school pizza delicious. Today, Chris, especially after I've gone around, I don't want to say the world, but I have been, I would definitely say the New York slice. Just a simple, big ass slice of cheese pizza. You got to fold it and everything. It's got to be a big honker of pizza. It's got to have a chewy dough, but crispy on the outside. Oh man. So yeah, I guess what's your favorite style of pizza from top to bottom, by the way, don't just be like thick crust. I'm talking about toppings and everything. Let us know. And also make sure that you let us know. So I guess there's two questions of the day, which one you prefer. I still prefer the first one, but I will admit that the pro, I mean, profile, these look super pretty. One thing that I forgot to do though, is I forgot to see if they're compatible. So real quick. Ooh. Okay, they did change the last because of the Air Max unit. And if you don't like the way that they fit with this one, but you have the original Ashad ones, take the midsole out and put it in the twos. Much better fit. But yeah, that pretty much takes care of it from our end. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We greatly appreciate it. We will catch you guys on the next one. So until then, have a good one.